In something we all love to see, Hi-Fi Rush was announced and released on the same day, something practically unheard of in the gaming world. Hi-Fi Rush is a rhythm-based action game developed by Tango Gameworks and published by Bethesda. The game follows a self-proclaimed future rock star named Chai who becomes a defect of an experiment that gives him a robotic arm and the ability to sense the rhythm of the world. Using this power, Chai and his friends face off against the corporation responsible for the experiments and its leaders. Hi-Fi Rush also includes licensed music from real bands such as the Black Keys and Nine Inch Nails. Hi-Fi Rush is getting a lot of hype, and I wanted to give a quick review of the game to let you know if it's worth your time. The quick answer is yes, but stick around for the rest of the review if you want to know why. Hi-Fi Rush is a rhythm action game mixed with a good bit of combat and level exploration. That all sounds nice, but how does it actually play? Basically, you explore the world as Chai in something akin to an old throwback Nintendo era game. Secret corners, crates, and power-ups are found in all corners of the world, so exploration really does pay off. Combat consists of a light attack and a heavy attack, coupled with dodging, grapple hooking, and a great combo and special move system. Everything in this game comes together to form a package so complete, I honestly can't think of another game like this that puts so many different gameplay types together in a polished and complete package. Controls are crisp and responsive, but there's a depth to the combat here that would take months to truly master. I can see people getting insanely good at the mechanics of this game and pulling off insane combo meters and chains, something akin to the 2D fighting games of old. Now, if you're like me and you have very little rhythm, then you might find games like this are not up your alley usually. However, Hi-Fi Rush does a great job of not punishing you for missing a beat. What it does is ups the reward factor for playing it well, and this is something that it does in spades. Sometimes your timing is just off a little bit, but in this game, that's okay. When your timing is on though, this game reaches new heights and the mechanics mesh together very well. I never felt like the timing was unfair, it was simply me not being quite in tune with it. Combat in this game is a lot of fun, you'll fight a lot of different trash mobs, you'll fight mini bosses, and it has some pretty spectacular boss fights as well. There is a good enemy variety, the ability to upgrade to new combos, uh, new special moves, you get chip implants, there's item upgrades like health and power meters, and, uh, and things like that. So there is a fleshed out combat system in this game. Purchasing a new combo and then learning how to pull that one off and then doing that on an enemy is very, very rewarding. A lot of the moves in this game are very over the top and it has this really fantastic kind of um, comic book style to it to where when you land a really big hit, you'll see a big pow on the screen or finishing off a tough mob is usually accompanied with a huge boom that flashes on the screen before lots of gear parts and things that act like the currency in this game come spilling out. Um, I really enjoy the combat. The combat is based on um, timing everything to the beat of the game, which never stops. But the game is constantly giving you clues as to that rhythm in the world. Everything in this game pulses to the beat. Uh, your health meter pulses, lights pulse to it, your character taps his foot to the beat. So it's really trying to ingrain that rhythm aspect into you. And I found that it does a fantastic job with both the visual cues and the audio cues. So if you are like me and don't have a lot of rhythm, do not be put off by the fact that this game calls itself a rhythm game. Yes, it is much more enjoyable when you can time up things to the rhythm and pull off these cool combos and these great, fantastic moves. But you know what? If you want to just button mash your way through, you can do that. Like that's the beauty of Hi-Fi Rush, in my opinion, is it's enhanced when you play it the way that it wants to be played. But there is very little detriment to not being uh, on beat all the time with everything that you do. And when I say this game is on beat, I mean everything. Your attacks are on beat. Your dodges are on beat. Even your jumps can be on beat. And there is a reward for that with most of the time these moves being enhanced or being able to dodge multiple times in a row or jump a little bit higher and things like that as well. So... The, the combat and the move system in this game are honestly really, really well done. Now, the dialogue and the story in Hi-Fi Rush are just simply enjoyable. Um, each character feels well-voiced. They're not annoying, which is something that I'm usually worried about in games like this. All the characters play a role to help heighten the feel of the game in the world. 
uh, from the L.A. Noir Detective. Look at this, partner. An oasis in the dirt. A real place to concentrate. Been right in front of my eyes this whole time. Workers want peace and quiet. All these ducts, all this unused space. The future office. There are rats. To the cat 808 that you meet from the very beginning, who uh, sometimes does cat things. Everything in this world is cohesive and entertaining. Visually, Hi-Fi Rush is stunning. Never in my life have I felt like I'm playing a cartoon quite like I do in Hi-Fi Rush. Crisp animations, clean graphics, gorgeous colors, and a fantastic level and world design all come together to really make this game enjoyable to look at. Now, what's a rhythm game without music and killer sounds, though? The world in Hi-Fi Rush is simply alive to this beat that continues throughout the game, and it's reflected in nearly everything you see and do. Great bands and music coupled with guitar riffs, crowds cheering when you combo, and over-the-top sound effects are never gaudy, but they're always appreciated and they heighten the game in ways that you don't really appreciate until you stop to listen. Um, music and sounds do play a huge part in the game, and honestly, they use them to great effect as well, such as a parry combo against a samurai robot who clangs his swords together to show you the timing that you need to parry. <laughs> Um, to timing up your parries against a laser who gives you the cadence you need to follow before shooting you with said cadence. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush really is gaining a lot of hype. It kind of came onto the gaming scene by storm. Uh, I've put in close to eight hours to the game at this point. I am really enjoying my time with it. I have heard a lot of people ask about it, and that's why we wanted to do this quick little video review for you so you can check out some of the gameplay. You can see our thoughts on this game. Um, because it did come by surprise, we're not going to do a deep dive on it. We're actually currently all playing Forspoken, um, so we'll be having that deep dive coming here in a little bit. But this game deserves the attention that it's getting, and I really want more people to be aware of that attention because I think this is the kind of game that we really want to see more developers make. And honestly, it's refreshing to not have a game hyped for six months or two years, or however long you know a lot of these companies are doing, and to come out with a game that is fantastic and just say, hey, here you guys go. You want something new to play? You want something you've never heard of before? Here it is. And honestly, it's a great game. Um, so Hi-Fi Rush is available on Steam for $29.99. Now, this is another thing I love about this game because this game came in at the perfect price point. I would likely pay $60 for this game. Honestly, I probably would with what I know about it. But this game coming in at a $30 price point is right on track. Uh, I mean, they price this thing perfectly for a 10 to 12 hour experience. It's really at that sweet spot. This game is also available on Xbox uh, and PC Game Pass, which is where I picked it up. If you don't have an account, you can actually sign up for a dollar for your first 30 days. If you already made one before, hey, you know what? This game alone is worth the $9.99 for the month that you would be getting out of signing back up for Xbox Game Pass. Um, so that is basically it. Uh, you know, going back to our you know, standard rating, I would marry this game um, in, for a lot of reasons. Number one, the price point. This is a fantastic game for $30 or for $9 on Game Pass. Um, but everything in this game gels together between the controls and the combat, the rhythm aspect, and that aspect not being punishing because that would throw some people off. The cartoon style, the characters, the voice, Overs, um, I mean, the voice acting in this game is great. It's quirky. There's some silly characters. There's some humor involved. 
there's tight mechanics to the combat and the and the platforming and stuff like that. There's puzzles. It just really does a fantastic job of throwing a lot of different mechanics at you. There's side scrolling parts. There's, you know, dodging mechanics a la like a Death Star trench run almost. Um, there's just so many things in this game that it constantly surprises you as you play it. And it's constantly throwing in new things as well. So from me, this is a Mary. Go check this game out. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to the developers um, that made such a good game and did it in such a way to not follow the industry trends of hyping everything up or releasing broken products and things like that. So go check it out on Steam or Xbox Game Pass. This is a strong recommend from me. I know that Michael and Paul have both uh, dived into this and they both feel the same way I do. They just have a little bit less playtime at this point, but they're very excited about it. Go check it out. Hi-Fi Rush, fantastic game.